So this is the new one. Hello, everyone. This is Sarah Burns and the Invisibles here on the full moon. What a potent time. And so I hope everyone can find me. I, this is this is the here where I'm going to be the rest of the time. And so the, you know, the first the first thing I want to just bring us into awareness with today is the importance of our connection with the great trinity and so this is something that i've been integrating recently into my work and so the trinity being the great beneath the great oh hello eleanor you found me <laughs> the great beneath the great beyond and the great within and why i bring this trinity up is that i've been noticing that before starting any kind of session work or going into ritual ceremonial space really calling in what is your support network? What are what are different points or access points that you can call in or acknowledge so that there can be a deeper sense of groundedness in the work that you're doing? So I am calling in and acknowledging the great beneath today, all the levels of support, the earth, the foundations that we build our lives upon. Also acknowledging the great beyond, the unseen realms, the uh, ascended masters, the archangels, the elementals, and the planets, the stars, the great expansiveness that is the life all around us. May it come here and support us in understanding how to have a greater eagle eye perspective in this life. And then the last point is the great within. So honoring the great within of each and every one of you, your unique snowflake in this beautiful life, honoring the stories and the memories and the dreams, the aspirations, and all that makes you you and continues to make you you as you discover and explore yourself. So that being said, as other people are kind of popping on, this might be hard for people to pop on to today because I jumped all around a bunch of different programs having issues getting on. So it might just be you, Eleanor. <laughs> all right, so ringing this bell, here we go. So something that I've been exploring recently is structure and structure in regards to creating sacred space and creating the space that you wish to live in. So far, there's been a few different people come up to me and with ideas on how to create home, how to bring in that feeling of home. And the more that I explore that, what is that? Is How can you work with the situation that you're currently in? And on a physical plane, if that's what you're seeking, this is some guidance I said shared today, is that if you're seeking home, if you're seeking the home in the form of like a physical structure that you feel safe and loved and held within, then to work on the physical plane is can be really part of that. So what can you do to actually start bringing in your with your actions, whether it's working with the home you already have to start building it into something that feels more comfortable so that you're actually manifesting, you're calling in from from a home structure that is closer to what you desire. So remembering that there's always opportunities for us to put our energy into bringing in the foundation that we seek. So that's gonna be my first question today, um, is if there's any guidance on building structure for home as we're entering, as we're coming through the Cancerian time and the honoring the home. So here we go. Hmm. <clears throat> oh, they kind of want me to actually share this. Let's see. You know what, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let that slide. We're talking about home, here we go.
answers to questions of material support, whether it's you desire the material plane to support your needs through creating home around you, creating a structure, a physical structure that you can decorate, that you can infuse with yourself, that can become a physical example of where your inner world is by exposing it on the physical plane. There is an alchemy to this, understanding that your relationship with home, your relationship with how comfortable you feel in the home that you've created is very much connected to how comfortable you feel in this vessel, in this home that you live in, this beautiful physical body that you inhabit. And so as you're playing with seeking that feeling of home, what can you do to reestablish your sense of belonging in your own skin, your sense of belonging on this earth? And then from there, that's when you can start asking. And with actions, bringing forth that which helps you feel helps inspire the parts of you that you want to thrive in this life, whether it's your creative self, your sensitive self, the part of you that wants to have the nourishment, the divine foods, the gardens. What is it on the physical plane that represents home to you? And where is that missing to you? Because if it's missing, whether it's a temple space for some people, having an altar represents a home for the spirit. And if that's not there, then where does the spirit plane energy sit? Where does your divine connection rest in this life? And exploring from there. Thank you. There's a lot more on that topic, but I wanted to keep going because we're a little late with some technical difficulties. So the first question we have, and hello everyone for finding me. The first question we have is from Eleanor. Eleanor, are you still here, my dear? And the question that Eleanor says is, I feel a bit disconnected from my spiritual self lately for some reason. It's almost like there's a blockage that I'm struggling to clear. Do you have any advice? Well, that'd be interesting, Eleanor, to explore also just because of it was coming up. You are awesome. Hello. And exploring, do you actually have, have you created, if you're in a home, have you, do you have an altar? Do you have a place that represents where your, where the, your spiritual self can, can communicate through the physical plane? A place where you can kind of put presence for me, it's like, as I'm exploring, I call it alchemical altars. And alchemical altars are is a way of using the physical plane and structure infused with your intentions to almost enliven the objects as, and kind of turning them into spiritual objects and tools for yourself to reflect with. And so for any of you that, you know, maybe you don't have much space to work with or you really don't have many objects that you feel like you'd want to put on your altar. There's always the simplicity of even just like going out and getting, you know, picking some wild flowers or even, you know, dandelions popping up, bring some color home, put it in a jar. I can show you the most simple altar I have actually that I bring to my work or in my office. Actually, two of the candles went out. Um, it's very simple because I have to, is, so the altar that I set for this space, of course, is my tea and my cookie, but it's very simple. And so on the left side, I represent the yin. So the principles of more of the feminine energies, the holding, the supportive, the, the water, right? And then in the right side, I have yang. So more of these direction and force, life force and um, support, like this different levels of support. And then in the center is my, is unity. So it's my unity candle where, where all of our presence come to one. So even though there's only three candles, I've created them into meaning, right? And so in your life, curious, if that's something you could explore is 
how to create meaning in the life that is already presented to you. And that was just an example of bringing meaning into. So, so now I've created this, this ritual that I get to bring and, and remember to, to set up with my space. And so for you, let's see what they've got to say just about um, connecting with your spiritual. I'll have to explore that. Yeah. Connecting with your spiritual um, self. If there's anything beyond creating meaning and ritual through altar creation. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, the other thing that they said, just a quick thing, is to find, I'm almost seeing like an image of a book and kind of this image of you finding something that you could read that is will inspire you and enliven that spiritual connection. So whether it's, you know, exploring and maybe some people on here um, that are watching, if you have any good books that you'd want to kind of put on the thread that maybe Eleanor could check out, but that would just help you kind of journey into somebody that's holding that perspective or those teachings or that magic. And, and let that book guide you and support you. Um, something that I'm kind of, the first thing I heard was, and I'm forgetting her name, which the altar is, but she does Jaguar, I think it's called Jaguar Dreaming, um, a series, I'll have to double check. It's a series of kind of medicine woman books that are about these different medicine women around the world. And she kind of goes on these adventures. And I remember reading them kind of during these different times in my life when I was younger. And and they really helped open up a little bit of this world of the priestess and other ones that would be, I guess I haven't read them yet, but I'm kind of hearing like the Magdalene Codes and kind of these, these new books that are coming through that new old ancient books. Um, something to kind of enliven that, that internal knowing or that internal priestess work within you can can be helpful so that's for you hmm. Ooh, we've got crystal kaleidoscope miss lizzie hi sweetie and so lizzie says hello dear invisibles i've started working in these beautiful healing gardens it's a charity organization and we run a weekly market where we sell our produce at real affordable prices and as part of par, and as part of a compost exchange program. I'm finding that some people who come here are really pushy or rude or make really aggressive comments. And it's often at the end of my day when I'm tired. It's really throwing me off. What kind of protective grid or practice can I create for myself and also the overall gardens to encourage kindness and gratitude and to not let the harsh energy stick to me and throw me off? All right, let's see what they have to say. I mean, the first thing that I that I actually saw um, as I was ending that was I saw you actually um, possibly, I mean, I don't know if this would work, but I saw this image of either calling in the support of these different protector plants or maybe even wearing them on your body. So um, something like a motherwort or like any of these, these like guardian plants, um, tobacco. I'm not sure what you have growing. You could kind of feel into what plant feels like it wants to help protect and, and allyship. But I'm kind of seeing like one way is like you could even, and depending on if you're wearing a hat too, that like, especially if it's if it's feeling more mental you can put these these just you know put some sprigs of plants through your hair and asking the asking the plant spirits to to kind of work with you and help filter with you um, but the other image i saw was actually this is just for when you're working um maybe at the markets or when people are coming is like kind of it might not work with your space but i kind of saw this image of you know, like before going like creating almost like this, like really it's almost, I see like certain plants laid like in a, almost like not a mandala, but like just along the edge of the table or like some sort of, or if you made like a, a braid of sweet grass or something like there, I'm seeing something that you could, 
it could even be like at some point you could, this could just be something that you've created and you can bring with you where like, I'm kind of seeing this braid or like taking different, different plants and braiding them together. And then, Oh, what did she say? She says, yeah, that's what I did after the last time it happened. I put some yarrow. Oh, good. Um, yeah. And, but it does feel that for you, like, like learning, it's almost like there'll be different plants at different times of the day because kind of what I'm feeling. And so near the end of the day, maybe when you want, like that might also be like a time for like nasturtiums or something that's like, like bringing in that, that spiciness and that, that, that could be like a fun, I don't know if you have nasturtiums by the end of the day, like, you know, throw a little spray of nasturtium um, could be helpful for you. And also to just for the gardens to help with the gardens. Let's see what they have to say. Oh, there's lots of motherwort. Good. Yeah, they're all like they're like motherwort. Let's see. There's one more thing they want to share. Hmm. The last thing I saw, um, you have Mr. Chantier. The last thing I saw was, I mean, this is, this is really up to if that makes sense with the organization, but I kind of saw like a way of like something the plants would ideally like would be if, and it may not make sense for all, like for every plant, but that if you have, just say you have something that is you know, that you have a wide, you know, wide vast amount of crops per plant, but that if there was like one of those plants that you didn't actually harvest from, so almost like a mother plant that, and you could even, I'm kind of seeing almost like tying a little, um, like a little red string or something onto these, these mother plants. And um, I don't know why I'm just kind of seeing this, like these, these like one plants that could just hold space as, almost like the, the plant ambassador, the mother plant that um, doesn't get harvested. And I mean, that might happen to, to seed save, but I was kind of seeing something like that it could be a really beautiful addition to working with the garden. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the last thing for that that I just popped in is that if that doesn't actually work with the structure of the organization, even if you had like, and these are for probably bigger plants that you would be harvesting parts of, but you could even just do that and they could still be harvested, but you know, or you have this relationship that you know that there's certain ones that are the mother plants so that when you go to them, um, you can receive, receive the medicine directly from that, that mother plant. All right. Shoo. Moving on. Let's see. Mm. She says, thank you. Mm, I like the mother, that mother plant. Yeah. So let's see if we have any. I've got a private question here. It just popped on. And so since it just popped on, I'm going to. And so the question says, um, it says, hi, Sarah, can I ask a question? Me and my partner are having some relationship troubles. Can the invisibles offer any guidance on the relationship, i.e., is it the right one, and how to work through these challenges that seem to come keep coming up? Thanks. All right. Hmm. <clears throat> Okay, so the, the first image that, I, that I'm seeing um, is this image actually of a rotisserie chicken. Random. Um, <laughs> but I'm seeing this image of this rotisserie chicken and it, it kind of represents like in certain, in life, like there's certain cycles that, that are slow and like there's like almost like the relationship like requires like this even and very slow cooking. There's this process that is, that, 
it's possibly very slow moving to come to the place of understanding its completion. And why they're bringing this up is, is that like what's been happening, they're saying the lower left kidney, there's something, okay, they're gonna speak. <clears throat> So why we bring this up is that the sense of urgency for the relationship to be moving in its in a pace that is possibly more seems more effective may be confusing because what's happening is that there is this cycle that is a longer cycle that each of you are in. And this longer cycle can go through times where they're kind of popping out. The only the thing that they just they left me with because it feels like for some reason it's kind of hard to read past that um, is I kind of saw like I was seeing like this writer's retreat or this like I kind of saw you like going like I saw like nature and kind of going and I don't know if it's like actually a tent or some sort of like um, and it it feels almost like you. I can't tell if it's maybe that maybe the two of you going camping, but I see like I definitely see this separation in the way of um, each of you almost having your own tents. There's something about that, but then, or it's either you going by yourself, but it might be there might be something more important about the two of you guys going camping, but like having your own spaces actually, and then seeing with the you know setting the intention that. You're only going to, you know, meet whether it's if you feel like you've called to meet for food, but that it could be when you meet, it's because you've you're really choosing to come together, and that and that when you're taking the spaciousness and you know exploring this land or wherever, it's it could be like kind of this playful way of creating some um, magnetism, right? Where there is the spaciousness created. And then you can see, well, where, when do you in, impulsively or instinctually wish to come together and how to be more um, in sync with that and understanding more about this, how to create this safe, beautiful space to really follow your own, your own path, your own narrative within that relationship. So that's a bit of a project. I don't know if that would be easy enough to make happen, but I kind of saw that. And there's something about you writing. Like, I don't know if you're writing during that, or maybe each of you can like take time to write whether it's like writing love net letters or writing letters to each other and you know sneaking them under each other's tent can be really cute. <laughs> so that's a little bit for you. Um, but that's the main thing is that there's something, there's a cycle happening. There's not, no big red alarms that I'm picking up on, but a need for a new way, a new game really to create, to create that sense of understanding your commitments. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is for Sophia, my dear. Are you still here, Sophia? I, I realized I might have skipped someone actually. Sorry, I'm gonna hide that for a second. Um, before Sophia, we have, we have Ona. And hello everyone, by the way, let me pop in just, I'm going to say hi to everyone I see written, has written. We have Ona, we have Eleanor, we had Lizzie, we have Anya, Allison, Sophia, Kimberly, and anyone else that is on, I want to say hi. Hey Sophia, sorry, I, I totally went to your question and realized that I totally popped over a bunch of people. So the first one in line is Ona. And we are a little shorter today, so we'll call it, we have to end at 3.30, so that's in like 20 minutes, just to give people an idea. So Ona is saying, I'd love to know what guidance comes through to move forward in my relationship. Thank you, Ona, my dear. Are you here? 
Ona, are you here? I will answer your question if you're here. Ona, your question is, I'd love to know what guidance comes through to move forward in my relationship. Thank you. Are you here, Ona? I'm going to pass, pass over. Oh, there you are. Hey, yo. Okay. <clears throat> That's interesting. So the first thing I saw was kind of like, I saw these arms coming around like the midriff and like the image I felt was very like, um, like this like, kind of like clutching or this like clinging energy. And, and I asked a little more, I was like, what is this clinging? And they said, let's see if they can, there was something about like, it, how do they wrote said it was clinging to lust. Um, to like or something about clinging to lust to validate the relationship's um, capacity to thrive or something like that. Like it, they're showing that there's some sort of possible belief on what a healthy relationship looks like or feels like in relation to that sense or that lust or that that desire that can be within the relationship. And and why they're bringing this up is it feels like it's important to possibly even navigate if there's any beliefs that are possibly limiting what you see as a healthy relationship and why we're kind of saying this, and this goes for anyone else this might relate to. I know I've been in there, been, been there of, um, I think the individuals want to speak. Let's, let's let them do this. <laughs> The reason that anyone desires to create a structure for love is generally because that love brings forth the feeling and the beauty of blooming. Ideally, right? That it's in that blooming and love together, that experiencing and exploring not only your own radiance, but the radiance of another, that that can be seen as a healthy relationship. But the thing is, all, all cycles have their own capacity and length of germination. And so for you and your relationship, what we're seeing is that there has possibly been a misunderstanding on what the plant between you truly is or what the dynamic of this unique relationship is. And why we're bringing this up is that there's energy that's desiring to go into the roots, but feels like it needs to keep coming up to create something, to see something, to remind each other that it's still alive. And in, in that desire or that understanding that to be alive, you must see growth on the outside, is it always the case that one can very well be deeply nourishing their root structures? Whoop, they're kind of popping out. They're showing this image of, I think they're called, oh, plumerias. If anyone knows plumerias, they're gorgeous. Um, they're in Hawaii and there are these trees, I think magnolias are similar, like these trees that 
look so dry and um, they look like they could, they just look so fragile, kind of like these old, old, and they don't really have many leaves and, and then they just burst out with the most gorgeous flowers that are intoxicatingly delicious. And I'm kind of getting shown this, this image of, of like this tree. And I don't know if it's related to like your relationship of like, sometimes, sometimes life takes a form that doesn't necessarily seem like it's growing, but within it, there's this capacity and there's this life force that is about to produce such exotic de decadence. And so for you, the feeling of like, just being patient with where energy is growing right now in your relationship and not trying to encourage it to look like anything or to prove itself, you know, like this feeling of they're kind of showing this feeling of like, you know, prove that there's still something here. Like, come on, make this happen. Like bring in this energy, bring in this lust, bring in this show something to remind us that it's on. And, and to maybe, and maybe if this doesn't relate, that's totally, that's just, I'm just picking up what I am, but yeah, to honor that there is something that's growing that is a lot, that requires a lot more patience. And there's something about mid-October too for you, some sort of cycle. I don't know if that's when this next big blooming is, but just to, to have a little more patience and to make sure that if you are trying to encourage more outward expression to prove something, that that, that could actually be stunting what's really trying to grow, if that makes sense. And in that, in that accepting and that patience and that spaciousness that you can create for the natural growth that's taking place, then that's when that safety has been created in the relationship. And that can go in either direction. So that's for you. Mm -hmm. And hello, everyone that is popping on. We've got Victoria just popped on. Okay. So the next question that we have is from is for Anya. Anya Le, are you here, my dear? Are you still here? And Anya says, "Hello, beloved. I just met someone deep, I deeply connected with, and I'm curious what any what guidance is coming through about our connection and what I need to know." Thank you, Anya. Are you here? Are you here, Anya? Mm. Oh, you're so welcome. Oh, we've got we've got Robin here too. Yay! Okay, so I'm still waiting to see if Anya is still here. Anya Le, are you here? Can you hear me calling through your screen? I want to read you, but I won't if you're not here. Okay. So moving on, we've got Allison. Allison, my dear, are you here? Oh, Anya. Oh, that was a close one. Okay. I'll, I'll read you, Anya. But I'm going to start making rules if people don't say yes. To, I'm going to keep going. Okay. So... This is for you and for Anya in relation to any guidance around this connection and what you might need to know around it. And then for everyone that's waiting, just to give you an idea of who's cued. Oh, here, here, she says. <laughs> Maybe they just took a while. Um, who's cued? So we're going to do Anya right now. And then we've got Allison. And then we have Sophia. And if we have time, we'll get to Kimberly and then Robin. We probably won't have time for everyone, just to give you a heads up, because we'll have 10 more minutes here. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> so the first thing that they, they said, Anya was like, <laughs> like, don't do what you did the last time. Let it leak all over the place. <laughs> um, and so in that, I'm thinking part of the guidance is just understanding with this, with this energy, there's this excitement that's coming up between you two. 
still like this feels like this importance of like still letting it like create this like like there's like this feeling of needing to almost like savor it and and allow it to be like held a little less i don't know if it's like less publicly or just uh, i don't know maybe maybe you've already but this feeling of like they're showing me you know not just t like taking seeing this relationship as it's still like there's still this del this delicate um there's still this like delicateness around the relationship and it feels like in order to create a strong foundation to not like just let everyone know that what's happening like almost like if you're pregnant and you wait you know you some a lot of people by rule might wait like you know past first trimester just to make sure that like have this time to make sure that the baby's actually here and the relationship's actually here um but in that in that waiting in that presence, I was not that kind of pregnant woman, by the way. I was like found out the first day. I'm like, everyone, hey, my baby. <laughs> um, and then the last thing for you is that's interesting. They're just saying like cordyceps mushrooms <laughs> randomly, but maybe that would actually be an ally for you. Um, and also, I don't know if you're prone to like yeast infections or something. They're saying that there's just at our urinary there's something that maybe your lower area is prone to or has had experiences with um so just <laughs> just like keeping keeping um clear and clean like clean maybe like um uh, taking on like taking food like drinks or so almost like i'm seeing like supporting your body in a way that would prevent like yeast infections so maybe cranberry juice or ex just keeping things extra because for some reason they're showing that there might be a sensitivity there for you. I don't know why it's related, but just to be aware of that. So that's for you, my dear. She's uh, Anya says this resonated so deeply to keep concealed and sacred. Yeah, you'll, you'll know when it's time to really share. Just honor this container right now. All right, so moving on, we've got, now we've got Sophia. I got all excited earlier. Sophia, are you here? Sophia, my dear, is saying, hi, Sarah, I'd love to hear from you in the visibles. I'm going through a challenging time and welcome guidance. While I am waiting, I will pour myself some tea. Today we have gingerbread tea, which is a chicory and, oh, there she is, awesome! Chicory-based tea with maple syrup and coconut milk and homemade cookies. <laughs> mm, you're so welcome, Anya. So this is for Sophia, who I will be seeing later on with a bunch of ladies quite excited about. Okay. Yep, and Allison, you are next. I see, yeah. Okay, I think we'll be able to get to you. So this is for you, Sophia. Here we go. So the first thing that I heard was, I was hearing like, don't go, around. they said, don't go around in circles. Like you did, they said 2018, the year of like fire tiger or something, which I don't think is 2018. Um, it would be interesting to explore. I don't even know which year we're in Chinese horoscope wise. Um, explore fire tiger. And maybe this is, or maybe you know somebody that's, I'm curious. I should almost look up right now, um, but I won't because we are tight on time. But there's there's something about this like this pattern of of going around in circles and it's like they're showing me this image of like this merry-go-round and how 
life can kind of be like that where we we make a choice you know everything settles in life and we make a choice to you know i'm going to sit on the ostrich no i'm going to sit on the tiger and then you sit on that and you you have your ride and then you get off but what they're showing me is like almost to notice when your cue to transition out of certain cycles are and how that in the past has been like tricky or, or getting off too soon, whether just getting off and like trying to get off the ride before it's completed. Um, and so for you, it would be interesting to see what in your life, what kind of cycles or patterns have you felt you may have, you know, prematurely tried to get out of, whether it's commitments or choices that you've made and simultaneously, what are, what are some cycles that maybe you've been actually in too long that it's time for you to shift up? Because they're saying that both of these, these characteristics are possibly at play right now. And last thing, I don't understand this, but the first, what I heard was, it maybe makes sense to you, was they said, don't conceal the guardianship you hold in your womb. So, oh, that's interesting. Okay, I think they're gonna talk. So many women or womb carriers have forgotten the power of the guardianship within the womb. And when we speak to this, we speak of the energy that actually can ripple out into our life. And so for you, this guardianship is required to actually protect what is sacred to you, your divine right creativity and offerings. And why we're saying this is that we see that there's this pattern of revealing, but not necessarily protecting these creations in a loving way, but in a way that actually gives them the space that they need to take roots. Just like a small plant that if they are put out too quickly, they can freeze because they haven't adapted. There needs to be a transitional phase between finding and having a revelation, creating something, and then revealing it. And it's in that transitional phase that you actually give strength to your creations so they're not shocked by life as it comes to them, or that the people that relate with you aren't their aggressiveness or their assertiveness doesn't stunt the growth of what you're holding. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Mm. It's a lot of this theme today about this divine right protection, but in a loving way. So, Oh, it is three thirty. I think I can do Allison. I'll just do a quick, quick little, cause I know you've been meeting for a while. And I have to, I'm supposed to end at 3.30. So for everyone else, you're welcome to stay on for this last question. Um, otherwise, I'm not going to be able to get, oh, that's my alarm. It's very lovely. You can listen to it while I talk. <laughs> so as for everyone else who had a question, which I honor and respect, please come on next week. I will be starting earlier. This time I had technical difficulties. We weren't able to get as many questions. So that goes to... Oh, Lord, or no, I haven't skipped you, Allison. That goes to Lori. So, Allison, are you here? And that also goes to Victoria. I'm not going to end Robin. I'm not going to have space for your, your questions today. But, Allison, if you are here, I have space for your question. Alice, 
Allison, I know you were, you wrote so many things saying you were here. You are, yay. Okay. <laughs> I did not skiff you. No, you're good. You're just way down here. All right. Now I have to find your question. Oh, maybe I did skip you. I'm so sorry, honey. I thought you were after. Um, I apologize. Sorry about that. I did skip you all oh, year. <laughs> okay. And so Allison says, hi, I'd love to hear any messages the invisibles have for me. Thank you so much. Will do. I think I'm going to start taking notes. I'm going to write everyone's name so I don't have to keep scrolling. So this is going to be a quick one because i got to get my daughter. <clears throat> Turn up the volume. Because what wants to be heard needs to be heard loudly. This is not a place for censorship of truth. This is a place for amplifying the resistance just as much as you amplify the persistency that you feel. And so for you, what wants to get turned up is these quiet little truths, these quiet little desires, these quiet little beliefs that feel like they have to keep quiet to remain pure. But for you, in order to actually meet them head on and honor the capacity they have to give life to the world through their innate being, through the expressions that you create of these parts of yourself, you are actually becoming that amplifier, that illuminator, not just for yourself, but for the world. And so if that is the message that we can put into you today is to create an amplification of what may seem quiet. Sometimes those things that need to be amplified, that the volume needs to be raised, are just those passive thoughts we have in the background. That little voice, that, oh, but wait, I wanted that. Well, that would have been nice if I had created that. But I'll just let that go. No, bring it up. Speak to what you want. Speak to what has not come into your life. And declare your desires in a strong way for the world to hear. Whether it's your desires in relationships, whether it's your desires in business, whether it's your desires in how you want to be heard and respected, those need to be clear and articulated. That's how not only you respect yourself and hear your own inner truth, but the world can reflect that back at you. Thank you. Boom. <laughs> All right, everyone. So let's read Allison. And I thank everyone for popping on. And I'm sorry I can't get to all your questions, but do pop on next week. And so we're in Pacific Standard Time. So it is 3.35 now, and we start at 2.30. So if you ever want to really get your question on, come earlier. The earlier, the better. And we will do our best. And if you want to have a private session with me also, you can always schedule that on deepsouljourneys.com. And on Wednesdays, I have a special where we do buy donations. So you can, wherever you are in the world, we can do Facebook um, video, or you can come to my office here downtown Salt Spring, and we can do a session by donation soul consultations for 30 minutes. So if you want a little more one-on-one -on -one time with me than the Invisibles beyond our little like five, 10 minute spurts here, then I would love to support you in that. So until next to everyone and have a beautiful, beautiful full moon. Woo! <laughs> and aloha.